From WJCT Studios in Jacksonville, Florida, I'm Ray Hollister. I'm Tom Braun. And this is Deemable Tech. This week's episode of the Deemable Tech podcast is bought, brought to you by A Small Orange Homegrown Hosting, a refreshingly different approach to web hosting, on the web at asmallorange.com. All right, before we jump into the show, could I ask a favor? Sure. Thanks. Would you take a second and tell your friends about Deemable Tech, especially if you know someone who's interested in learning more about technology, um, whether they currently know nothing about technology or you think they already know everything about technology, tell them to check us out, Deemable Tech. Uh, we'd really appreciate it. You want me to tell them about Deemable Tech? I want people who are listening and watching to tell them about Deemable Oh, okay. Tech. I got confused there. Okay. Our so, listeners yeah. and watchers, or as I like to Listen. call them, the watchers. The watchers? <laughs> or listeners. The watchers? Listeners. Listeners. I like it. Yeah. All right. So yeah, if you haven't already told everyone you know about Deemable Tech, tell people you know. Because we'd like to help them too. Mm-hmm. And also, if you haven't done so already, make sure that you are subscribed to Deemable Tech. Just go to iTunes and search for Deemable Tech. Or you can go to deemable.com slash iTunes and that'll take you right to our iTunes page. You can also subscribe to our YouTube page and Facebook and we're on the Twitter as well. Just search for Deemable Tech. Got a question about your computer, smartphone, tablet, or the internet? Give us a call at 1-888-972-9868 or send us an email at questions at dmable.com. That's right. And, well, the time is finally here to announce the winner of the Amazon gift card contest. So if you're not familiar with it, hang on, no drum roll yet. Oh, if you're not right. familiar with it, we have been asking you guys, you, our listeners and our, our watchers, listeners. our listeners, <laughs> that's going to be the name of the Demobile Tech community. It's going to be the <laughs> listeners, uh, to answer a few questions about this podcast, the Demobile Tech podcast. All you had to do was go to demobile.com, click the link to take the survey, and if you did it, you are entered to win a $20 Amazon gift card, which we are going to draw the winner of right after we answer your questions. <laughs> so right. stay, stay tuned. That's right. We're going to announce the winner later. Questions first, winner at the end. That's right. Uh, today on the show, we are going to answer your questions about what phone works best for overseas travel. Which calendar app works best. Hmm. How to move apps to the SD card on an Android phone. And how to print a radio segment. All right. But first... We have a question from Deborah. We do. Let's see. Deborah writes. Actually, will you read that? I will. I am a teacher, and I need to track my receipts for tax purposes. I try to keep up with this on my computer, but invariably forget, get behind, and give up. This leads me to merely estimating my out-of-tax expenses for my classroom at tax time. Is there a good free app for my iPhone that can help me keep up with my expenses and receipts? I searched the App Store at iTunes, but the results list was so long that it was daunting, especially mm. since I cannot sort, for, sort it for reviews. I thought I had found a winner with Concur, but then realized only the app was free. An online account would require money. That's right. Okay, well, thanks for your question, Deborah. It's yeah. a really good question. Uh, let me start with, by making a disclaimer and a disclosure. I need to say both. Um, I, I may have mentioned this on the show before, but I work for the IRS. That's my full-time job. Uh, no, save the booze. I know. Uh, but I do not speak for the IRS. Let me make that very clear. Uh, that's why we always avoid financial and tax related questions, any of that stuff on here. Don't take anything that I say as representative of the Internal Revenue's position on anything. <laughs> um, they, my opinion is solely my opinion, and they do not necessarily reflect the Internal Revenue Service's view or opinions. Um, also, don't take anything that we say, Tom or I, as financial or accounting advice. If you need financial or accounting advice, we strongly recommend you seeking expert advice from qualified professionals. The lawyers make us say this stuff. No, it, uh, we're, we're serious. Like, we're idiots about financial and accounting. Don't, don't mess with us. Even though I work for the IRS, I don't deal with that at all at the IRS. I dealt with tax law years ago. I don't remember any of it. Now I deal with computers at the IRS. It's great. Now, that being said, all that being covered, um, so you can't come back and say, tell the IRS, but Ray said blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. Don't do that. You can't do that. Uh, I don't speak for the IRS. Um, all that being covered. We do know of a couple of apps that w- might work perfectly for what you're trying to find. The simplest one that we use all the time, we talk about all the time on our show, is Google Drive. Yep. It's free. It works on Android and I- iOS and Windows and Mac and Chrome and Linux. And I think it works on everything except for maybe a TI-84. It doesn't work on that. Probably not. They'll probably come out with a, an update for it. But <laughs> Unless it, you rooted your TI-84 and it's now running Linux. There you go. But it works on practically everything, and it's really easy to use. And it's 
fairly simple to do if you've ever used a spreadsheet before. All you got to do is start a spreadsheet up on Google Drive to keep track of your transactions. And then, here's the fun part, you take a photo of your receipts and upload them to a folder in your Google Drive and just name the folder Receipts. Hmm. It's like having a shoebox in the sky. <laughs> you just the upload cloud. your receipts in the cloud. The cloud. Exactly. <laughs> um, that's actually how I do our ours here. Uh, for for Dean Tech, that's how I keep track wow. of our expenses. And Ray works for the IRS. Uh, no, wait, wait, don't okay. you say that. <laughs> Not a recommendation, financial or accounting. Okay, so um, now a solution that is a little bit more custom made for what you're trying to do. There's an app called One Receipt. W- one word, One Receipt. It's a great app that you can use to scan in your receipts using your iPhone camera. And what it does is it automatically determines the amount of the transaction. It even usually figures out what the transaction was for. So like if you go to Office Depot, it figures out office supplies. Or you go to Home Depot, it figures out home repairs, that sort of thing. Um, it can also, it, it, so it detects the amount, what it's for, and keeps track of that for you. And if it doesn't figure it out, then it'll give you you know an error that it wasn't able to figure it out and you can enter it in manually. What's really cool about this one though is it also connects can connect with your email account and actually multiple email accounts so that when you get electronic receipts like from Apple, you know, the iTunes account or from Amazon or, or even Office Depot does electronic uh, receipts now. Or if you use a, a merchant that uses Square, you can get an electronic receipt from them as well. It grabs those receipts out of your email and keeps track of them as well. Nice. So it kind of pulls all your paper and your emails together for one record for all your receipts. That's very cool. Yeah. And the way I kind of do, the way I get around that with Mm -hmm. e-receipts for Doomville Tech is I print those as PDFs and save the PDF in Google Drive. So you can do it with Google Drive too. Now, one receipt is currently free, but it's still in beta. So you could see that changing once it comes out of beta. They might charge for the service. They have to make money somehow. And they don't have advertising like Google does. Um, also the thing is it takes those receipts and it figures all this information out and optical character recognition, the, the, the software that detects words, it, it's good, but it's not that good. So I am assuming that someone is probably looking at these receipts and figuring out what goes with what. Hmm. So if that makes you uncomfortable, you might not want to get into that. Well, um, I might be able to do like, uh. A- you know, if they're feeding hundreds of thousands of receipts through a, you know, a system, they might have sure. a pretty good recognition. Like, it doesn't even have to recognize the characters. It would just be like, this looks like a Best Buy receipt. You that's know? true. Yeah, that's that's very true. I, I, I don't know. When I first used it, I used it a while back, and it just made me a little uncomfortable. I was like, eh, maybe somebody's looking at it. They don't explicitly say on their website whether it's all machine read or human read. Mm-hmm. So that's why I, if yeah. you're the kind of person who's a little bit on the, you know, privacy rights, you know, you don't want anybody looking at your stuff, then maybe this isn't for you. Um, But otherwise, it is pretty seamless and really simple to use. It walks you through how to, like, how to scan the picture to make sure you get it. It's really cool, too, is it will let you scan really long receipts. Like, you ever walk out of the store and it looks like you have, you know, the Constitution printed out on your, or the Bible, like, all printed out on one page. Um, Pages and pages and pages of receipt. It shows you how to scan that oh. so like you lay it out flat and it says okay move down move down move down nice and it gets the whole thing and saves it all so it's really nice um there's also an app called lemon wallet uh which sounds it, delicious <laughs> it it does the same thing but it's mostly focused on storing like your credit cards and your loyalty cards i used it i really wasn't that impressed with it but it does the job um the app is kind of a little crashy too when i last tried it so it, it's okay um Honestly, though, I haven't found any other apps that were free or worth the money. Uh, So now I haven't tried every single app out there for accounting or expenses, obviously, because there's a lot out there. So if any of our listeners know of a really good expense recording record keeping apps that you like that work on iOS, because her question was specifically about iPhones, Mm -hmm. uh, let us know. Send us an email. You can shoot it to questions at deemable.com and just mention record keeping app in there. Now, there is a question, of course, that I'm sure you're thinking of, which is whether or not these apps would be sufficient for record keeping if, for example, you were audited by the IRS. Okay. So I wish I could answer that question, but I don't know the answer, to be honest with you. 
it, but if I, I do know where you can find the answer and I can give this information, go to irs.gov, www.irs.gov, search for publication 17. It's titled Your Federal Income Tax. That book, it's a big, big book. It has everything about your individual income tax. That will have the answers you seek. <laughs> but if it's not in there, it usually will tell you where to find the answers in a different publication. And if you still can't find the answer, you can call the IRS at 1-800-829-1040. That's for individuals. Or for your business, 1-800-829-4933. All that's available on their website at irs.gov also. Of course, you can't call them right now because they're shut down. <laughs> I was about but, to say. Yeah, yeah. So, is their website up right now? Their website is up, yes. Okay, that's good. Um, so because there's once, randomly, like, random government websites are down. It doesn't have yeah. any, like, rhyme or reason to it. Well, actually, it does. It has to do with the budget, uh, what budget items are covered and which ones aren't. So I guess. Yeah. But, it's, uh, but anyways, when the government reopens and I'm back at work, you'll be able to call the IRS and get an answer to your question if you can't find it in Publication 17. So there you go. Uh, hopefully that'll help you out. Uh, one of those apps, like I said, I personally, I use Google Drive just because I love Google Drive. I love me the Google Drive. And it does the job. But Lemon is pretty, uh, like I said, it's okay. Uh, one receipt, pretty good too. Cool. Lemon out. Yep. All right. <laughs> Sorry. All right. We got another question from Summer. She asks, I assume it's a she. Yeah. Uh, I listened recently to your advice with, about using a phone outside the U.S. Oh, I will be traveling to, to Mexico soon, and I've lived there before. So I actually have an El Cheapo phone, that's the Mexican term, <laughs> that I can bring with me and use there. However, I'd like to use my iPhone if I could. It's an iPhone 4S, but it's on the Sprint network. You mentioned iPhone 4S's would work, but the, but the Sprint also uses CDMA. So, is there something I can do so that it will work for me? I don't. I won't have a ton of Wi-Fi access. Thanks. Okay. Um, I'm so excited that people listen to us. Yeah, that's I, awesome. I didn't and she know paid I, close attention. This is a yeah. really this is a sharp question. Yeah, this is a great question, Summer. Um, an iPhone 4S, which I used to have one of those until I traded in for my 5S. Uh, they do work internationally. Uh, they work on practically all of the cellular networks around the world uh, because they are world phones. However, uh, like you said, Sprint does use CDMA. And when you get a phone from Sprint, an iPhone 4S specifically, uh, unless you got it like the very first week that it came out, it's locked. There mm -hmm. were a few that came out the first week that were unlocked. But they are locked to Sprint on CDMA. There is a SIM card in your iPhone. If you look at your phone, it looks just like the, the side of the iPhone 5S. I'll show you. On the right-hand side here, there is a SIM card, even if you have a Sprint or Verizon phone. Mm -hmm. And you can pop it out and you can see that SIM card. However, you can't activate it unless it's for international roaming uh, without actually unlocking your phone. However, the good news is if you call Sprint, they might unlock it for you. They don't have to, but they might. And they usually will. Mm -hmm. Off the record. <laughs> Only, you know, all the hundreds of people that listen to our show. Um, so if you're in good standing with Sprint, that's the first thing. You need to be in good standing. You need to have your bills paid up. Uh, usually if you've paid up every month on time for the last like six months to a year, somewhere in there. Uh, and you explain to them why you need it unlocked. Then, you know, and if you're kind of nice to them, then they'll probably unlock it for you. This will might be a lot easier if you're out of contract. They'll be really willing to like, like bending oh. over backwards They're to keep like, you, oh, uh, sure, keep on their service. Yeah. Well, well, you can keep paying us while you're not using our service. That's mm -hmm. fantastic because mm -hmm. <laughs> you're unlocked. You're out of contract anyways. Um, if you're still in contract or, you know, you've missed a few bills or you're behind, you're going to have to, you know, arm wrestle with them to get them to unlock it for you. And they don't have to. Like I said, they, they really don't have to, uh, especially if you're still in contract. Um, otherwise, I mean, if, if they're not willing to do it for you, you kind of have to unlock it the old fashioned way, which means jailbreaking it. Um, now we don't really cover jailbreaking tips and advice here, but our good friends at imore.com have a lot of great information there. If that's something you want to go down the road and, and deal with, you can check out their website at imore.com. That's imore is one word.com slash jailbreak. And I will include a link in the show notes for you as well. You can go visit them and get some information if that's something you want to deal with. Otherwise, just call Sprint. I think it's star two. You can dial on your phone, and it'll take you to uh, customer service with them. And be nice. Talk to them. They'll probably help you out. Cool. Cool. Uh, got a question about your computer, smartphone, tablet, or the internet? You can give us a call at 1-888-972-9868 or send us an email to questions at dmwell.com. And we have a question from Lewis. Ah. 
Lewis asks, after recovering items from two different recovery software applications, I am unable to open videos and over 90% of the photos. Oh. Please give me guidance to resolve this problem. Ooh, those Ray, are tough. Ray, I'm, uh, I'm confused. Yeah. The, the thing is, oh, well, first off, thanks for your email, Lewis. Uh, when we really want to help you out. Um, because this is one of the most frustrating things that happens when you're, you're, you lose data or, or it gets deleted accidentally. Mm -hmm. Um, it all depends on what software you used. So we're going to need some additional details. I, I sent you an email, uh, but I wanted to say this on the show also, just in case you heard it on the show before you got my email. Um, but we need some more information from you before we'll be able to help you out. So most importantly, we need to know what operating system are you using. Are you on a Mac, uh, Windows? I'm assuming you're not on Linux, but Mac or Windows. Uh, what one of you are Lion, Mountain Lion, Panther? <laughs> You know, it could be any any range. Def Leopard. Or what's the current one? Uh, the new one's on a cat, is it? No, it's a it's a place in California. It has to do with Mavericks. Mavericks. That's the new name. Uh, if you're already on Maverick, whatever. Um, or if you're on Windows, are we talking XP, 7, Windows 8, Pro, 64? You don't have to get into the exact details, but, you know, Windows or Mac would help. Um, also we need to know what software application to use. Like, is it a program like Recova, uh, which is one we've heard about, uh, it's a freeware. Uh, there's a lot of different recovery software programs out there. So and without mm -hmm. knowing the exact specifics, it's hard to say. And if you're receiving, uh, specific error messages, um, that would be great to know. Yeah, we, we need that kind of stuff really helps out. It's kind of like, you know, with car talk, when they, when they get problems, people are able to make sounds and, and, and describe the grunting and the squeaking and whatever. With computers, it's always errors, and we need mm -hmm. to know the software. That's usually yep. the make and model Dings of the car. and arcane, you know, this object is out of memory type stuff. Yeah. Um, so what I need you to do is email us back at questions at com and give us that information, and hopefully we should be able to help you out. Uh, if you need to get access to those files faster then you know, we, we have the show about once a week, um, on good weeks, <laughs> it's once a week, but if you need to get access to those files faster before we can get back to you, check out our business directory. You can go to deemable.com slash business directory. And there are several companies here in Jacksonville, cause I know you're from Jacksonville as well, that should be able to help you out as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have to take a quick break. When we come back, we have some more questions. You're listening to deemable tech. Welcome back to Deemable Tech. I'm Ray Hollister. And I'm Tom Braun. If you have a question for Deemable Tech, what do they call, Tom? Uh, Ghostbusters? No. Who are you going to call? No. That's that's if you have a problem with ghosts, I think. <laughs> I think. Uh, they can call 1-888-972-9868 or send us an email at... Deemable... Questions at Deemable.com. <laughs> Wow, you know, and if your friends, uh, or if, if you've liked us on Facebook or you follow us on Twitter, you can always, you know, ask us on there too. We answer That's questions true. on there. But Actually, only we have, if you've liked us on Facebook. We have a question from Facebook uh, that we're going to answer in a second. But Tom. Yeah, before we jump into that. Yeah. I just have a little anecdote to relate. Okay. Um, so uh, I just picked up a HDMI switch for my television. And, you know. It, what does that do? So I've got, it's got two HDMI inputs in the back. And I needed more than two. Okay. So the switch is going to enable that. That's fine. Okay. So you uh, plug more, more HDMI stuff in. devices yeah. into it. Okay. Uh, so that's fine. Um, and HDMI is just the cable that, that high def uh, television sends signals through typically these okay. days. So I was like, oh, okay. Uh, you know, this, this uh, switch didn't come with an HDMI cable. So I'll just uh, run, you know, I'll, I'll run over to Best Buy. I'm passing by there and I will pick one up. So I go to Best Buy, go into the home theater section, and start uh, browsing your HDMI cables. Holy cow, those are expensive. <laughs> yes, they are. Unbelievably expensive. That. Like, there's, like, monster cable, diamond, blah, 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 six feet, 
$39.99. And that was wow. the lowest price 40, 40 I saw for a cable. standard HDMI cable. Wow. All right. Let me tell you what I did instead of that. I went to Amazon.com mm-hmm. and I bought one for $9.99. Nice. Uh, yeah. Amazon Basics? Yeah. Yeah. Amazon Basics has a lot of great stuff They're for great. really cheap. But I've heard from other people, and, and I post, I ranted about this a little bit on Facebook uh, a couple days ago, you know, and I heard from other people, you know, responded, you know, you can go to Walmart, you know, you can go to, who knows, don't go to Best Buy. I'm just going to say it's like, I love oh, Best Buy for most wow. things, but apparently they are making a lot of their overhead selling heavily marked up HDMI cables. Is it just the HDMI cables or are they marking up the prices of Most of, of their other cables things? that I mean, I was really concentrating yeah. on HDMI cables, but most of the cables seemed high and I've noticed that in the past, but mm-hmm. like the HDMI cables specifically were the first one that just like, I was like, are you serious? Yeah. Like hmm. what on earth? And I think the thing is like people go out and you drop, you know, Eight hundred, a thousand, twelve hundred dollars on a new TV. So when they sell you a couple of HDMI cables What's for forty, 40 bucks, bucks a, What's 50 you know, bucks, you don't yeah. notice it. Yeah. But you should not be paying that. That is four to five times what you should be paying. Now I know some of our audiophiles and I guess cinephiles are gonna they're gonna yell at us and they're gonna say, "Oh, but Tom, you don't understand the difference. It's gonna mm. it, you, they, there's a better quality if you have a gold plated cable." And it, it's the shielding that matters. If you're running a 4K television on the other side of an arena, then yes, <laughs> by all means, spend the extra money. But for most applications, there is no difference. Yeah, I mean, when you, especially when you're talking about smaller cables, shorter ones, mm-hmm. unless you're getting feedback or, or, or yeah, if interference. you see artifacts, yeah. then by all means. But gosh, yeah, that, that'd be one place to start checking and saying, oh, okay, maybe that I do need a better cable. So just a pro tip: if you see an HDMI cable for thirty nine ninety nine and you're not running, you know, the ultimate surround system sound theater system at home skip it yeah go online go to walmart get a cheap one you can get them for 10 bucks that's about you know what you should be paying maybe 20 bucks for a really long one yeah that's tops i've actually been asked that question several times before because on a lot of cables there's a wide variety you'll see like ethernet cables that are all over the spectrum you know Mm -hmm, five dollars up to fifty dollars yeah and uh, even the old days like the s video cables and it's really hard for people they're like i don't know should i get the gold plated silver laced yeah (laughs) here yeah here's the thing like uh you know the ethernet cables like cat 5 cat 6 you know hdmi those names are standards yeah like they're standards that have been worked out by bodies of engineers and scientists that agree on this stuff and they're worked out so they work yeah like if you get one that's an hdmi capable cable that means it meets the requirements the minimum requirements to work you know and occasionally you could get some rip off you could get a bad cable but you know so you don't need like this extra stuff that makes it extra special that they're trying to sell you with their markups you don't need it very true but on the flip side if you are noticing problems with your with your signal yeah it's probably the first place to start is check the cable i still wouldn't go to best buy (laughs) Hey, uh, we got a question from Kristen. We do. And she asked it on Facebook. That's right. What'd she ask? And this is Kristen with a Y. Yes, it is. Uh, She says, can anyone recommend a calendar app for my iPhone? I've kept my calendars a list in my notes for years and have accidentally deleted it multiple times, which is stupid, I know. Haven't found a calendar app yet that I like. I want to be able to integrate tasks I've given myself for the day, and I'd like to be able to easy cut paste from date to date. Suggestions? Okay. Um, So, Kristen, here's the thing. I don't think you want a calendar app. She I know doesn't. you. I know you actually she, said you want she a says cal- calendar app. Right I, there. I know you're very clear. You want a calendar app recommendation, but the inner getting things done inside of me. That if you're familiar with getting things done, the book, um, it's screaming. It's just screaming when you say you want a task list on your calendar. Your calendar, according to the theory behind getting things done. If you haven't read the book, it's amazing. Get it seriously. Big recommendation. Go to Amazon. Go to iBooks. Whatever. Get getting things done. Um, The idea is you're only supposed to use your calendar for events that are scheduled in time. So, for instance, recording the show tonight is an event scheduled in time. That would go on a calendar. Uh, The meeting that Tom and I are having later this week to discuss the upcoming season of Deemable Tech. By the way, we need to schedule that. (laughs) That's going to be on our calendar. Um, But, you know... Writing the script for tonight's show, that's mm-hmm. not an event set in time. I can do it any time between, you know, right now <laughs> and weeks ago when I should have actually written the script. Um, so that's the kind of thing that it, it's a task. So it really should be a task app that you're looking for. Now, honestly, the, cal- the built-in calendar app is pretty good. 
um, especially in iOS 7. I'm assuming that you have an iPhone 5 or a 4S. If you have a 4, uh, like I mentioned in our Folio Weekly article, don't upgrade to 7. You probably don't want to. But if you have a 4S or a 5 and you haven't upgraded to 7, go ahead and do it. It's great. Um, or if you have a 5C or a 5S, you already got iOS 7. But the calendar app is really fantastic in iOS 7. Um, it gives you a lot of different views, and you can look at it a lot of different ways. Um, for what you're using your calendar for, you're keeping a list in your notes, I would actually be using reminders. Um, it works a lot better for that. You can check things off, and you can it'll carry over day to day uh, automatically. Also, it's automatically backed up to your iCloud if you're using iCloud. Now, on a separate note, you mentioned that your notes have disappeared. If you're using a Google account, you can set it up where your notes are automatically backed up to your Google account. And if you're using iCloud, it can automatically be backed up to your iCloud. So I'd like to know if you're using either one of those. Shoot me an email or message on Facebook or shoot me an email at questions at deemable.com and I'll follow up with you on that. Uh, but you might be able to get those back uh, on your notes if you're using, if we're talking about iPhone notes. Um, the Reminders app is really good. You can use Siri to make a reminder. You can just tell me, oh, hey, remind me at 6 o'clock to take out the trash, and she'll do it. She'll just add the reminder. Um, Would you have any suggestions in the way of, like, uh, task list type apps? Well, there's one that I am in love with. It is a fantastic app, and I can't find it now. It's so awesome, I have it hidden. Let me look, look up. It's in my lookup folder. Okay. It's called Toodledoo. Toodledoo. Now, Toodledoo. Now, it is a very intense, uh, complicated task app. Uh, you can do multiple projects. You can have sub-projects. Um, you can share tasks with other people. Um, and it's very getting things done driven. It's, it's very centered around that, that uh, philosophy of how to do things. Because um, a lot of what getting things done is it's centered on where you're located. So uh, stuff that I can only do here at WJCT, I have a... Uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, context for that. So I can look at a list that shows me only the stuff that I can do at WJCT. I got a list for stuff that I can only do at home, stuff that I can only do in the car, mm -hmm. stuff that I can only do at the IRS, like that are related to those jobs. Um, or, you know, like phone calls that I have to make or emails. So you can sort the mm -hmm. tasks that you have to do. Like, for instance, you can break a whole project up. You know, like, uh, let's say we're going to make a movie, okay? Mm -hmm. You and me are going to make a movie. We need to make some phone calls. We need to shoot some emails. We need to buy some stuff. And I can sort those tasks into the different contexts. You know, like, going to buy stuff I need to do in the car. Right. Calling phone phone calls, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. Got it. Cool. Um, so that is pretty intense. Uh, and it, it's not free. The app, I think, was uh, a few bucks. Not too much. It's under five bucks. Um but it's really worth it if you really want to tackle your tasks in a in a really easy to do way. Um, there's also a lot of other. There's a lot of task apps. There's like Clear. Um, there's so many of them lately. Uh, if you look under productivity under the iTunes, you'll see a lot of different tasks at task apps, um, and that should be able to help you out. As far as using it for calendars, like I said, the problem is you're going to have to create a new calendar event every day and move those tasks over to it. And it just doesn't work as well. Uh, count, it's really better if you can separate the events that don't move. They, these are set in time. You have to be at this place at this time. Mm -hmm. Keep those on your calendar. But things you need to get done, put them on a task list that you can organize by their due date. Yeah. Uh, because reminders and Toodle do and practically every to-do or task app out there has it where you can say, this has to be done by this date, or I need to do this in two weeks, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. So check out, check out uh, the like I said, just the Reminders app on your iPhone. It's really great. And you can also go to iCloud.com if you didn't know this. You can go to iCloud.com, sign in with your Apple account, and your task list will be right there. And it's a lot better since they upgraded, updated to iOS 7.0. They also updated iCloud.com, and it's a lot better to use. So, nice. yeah. Well, here's a Hopefully reminder for our listeners. Uh, if you have a question for us, you can send us a 
email at questions at deanwill.com or give us a call at 1-888-972-9868. That's right. And we have another question. This one is from Dana. She emailed us and asked, I listened to your discussion on the use of cell phones overseas. I wanted to print this. That was a popular question, wasn't it? Apparently so, yeah. <laughs> on your website, uh, in WJCT, I see that I can listen to it, but I do not see where I can print this. Can you forward me a copy of this? I would like to have this copy so I can decide what I would like to do as I plan to travel soon. That is uh, very cool. Thanks, Dana. Um, well, all of our radio segments are available at deemable.com slash radio. Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe Sean also publishes them on WJCT's website at news uh, wjctnews.org or news.wjct.org. Either one, it goes to the same place. Um, we do include a transcript of the segment. It's almost word for word. Uh, of the segment on the, both sites, actually. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't have a printer-friendly version. I, I, I just realized that today. If you hit print, you kind of get everything. You get all the ads, all or not ads, but all the graphics, all that stuff. So um, I might see if I can fix that. Uh, I don't know if there's a what they call a plug-in to make that, to give us a printer-friendly version. I'll see what I can do. In the meantime, you could, uh, if you go to dmble.com slash radio, find the segment, uh, you can cut and paste it into, you know. Yeah, that's what I was going to suggest. Word or whatever. And that's something to know for any website. You can go and just copy and paste the text into a Word document and hit print. Yeah. But you have to go to our website, dmble.com slash radio, not to WJCT's website. <laughs> well, I was going to say, actually, Sean reminded me of this. If you go to WJCT's website, uh, wjctnews.org, they're, they do have printer friendly, so there should be a button. If I look at it real quick, I bet it's there. But do we have the transcript on there? Uh, yeah, the transcript's on oh, there. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. So let's see. We're gonna we're gonna take a, a virtual field trip to uh, news.wjct.org, and we trips. know that you know not all all of our listeners are you know within the WJCT uh, listening area. I mean, a lot of people outside of the the city and the state and the country, uh, but but she is. We are from she WJCT, so. Heard, uh, so let me pick one at random. Let's see here. You can click print. It's right at the uh, underneath the headline. I just pulled up Police Academy's Michael Winslow performing at the Jacksonville Comedy Zone. Uh, so I'm going to hit print, and let's see what happens. This is exciting radio. <laughs> uh, on Chrome, it does absolutely nothing. That's fun. And you're on Chrome too, so. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking that on Windows or Mac, it's going to work, and you're going to get a pop-up, and it'll be printer-friendly, so. Uh, as far as our website's concerned, let me look into it. I'll see what I can do. Until then, copy and paste. And you'll be good. Exactly. All right. Uh, we have now, another... we have another email. Yes, we do. It is from, let's see, Robert Snyder writes, I had to uninstall Facebook on my Android phone, and when I reinstalled it, I couldn't move it to my SD card. This is a problem because my phone doesn't have a lot of internal memory. Why can't I move it, and is there a way around it? Robert Snyder. Snyder. That name rings a bell. Doesn't yeah, I've heard of that guy. But, um, how do we know him? Uh, Don't we know him some from something? Yeah, yeah. What, uh, what, who's that? Hey, that's that's me. Hi. Oh, Robert. Robert right. me. Oh, you're Robert back Snyder. in the booth. He's, he 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 like works. You're there every show. week. Yeah. Yeah. You're the camera guy. Yeah. Hey. You could say that. Do you have a camera on you? Uh, I I do. Oh, sweet. You. Hi. Hey, you read the transcript. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> you knew what was going on. Could you switch the camera to yourself so that they can see you? I did. Oh, okay. I, did I, that. I can't see what's on the video. So. so, Robert, I mean, you work, you know, you work with us, man. We know you, you can just ask us. You, I did. And you guys told me to email it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, that's something like something we would say. <laughs> well, now we're telling you to ask us. All right. Uh, Robert, um, <laughs> you've got an Android phone. I don't know the answer. Th that's true. I do have an Android phone. Okay, Android so this phone. is a common thing. Android phones, uh, generally you have uh, you have internal memory and you have an SD card, which you can, you know, buy expansions for. Oh, you can add memory to your Android phones? You can't. That's... Depends on the phone. Depends on the phone. Oh, okay. It's not universal. Um, so one way that people in the past have tried to conserve memory on their Androids is uh, it has an option to move an app to the SD card. Oh, okay. So it takes out the internal memory and puts on the SD card. Right. Um but uh, there are some known issues with that. So let me start at the beginning. What kind of phone do you have, Robert? Uh, well, it's an LG. It's, I mean, it's it's several years old. Okay. And what version of Android are you running? Uh, it's 2.2. .2. So I think that's Froyo, um, just for reference. Okay. Uh, so 
here's the thing. There's a now you said that you installed Facebook, uh, or you uninstalled Facebook and reinstalled it. Correct. And after that, you couldn't move it to the SD card. Also correct. All right. So there's a couple things that could have happened here. One is that publishers uh, can actually set apps so that they can't be moved to the SD card. So it's possible that there was a new version of Facebook, the Facebook app, and they decided, you know what, we're going to stop people from moving to the SD card. In fact, I'm sure you've updated the app many times. You know, you probably moved it over, you know, if this is the case, and I don't know for sure that it is, but if this is the case, you probably moved the app over before they made this prohibition, and then once you reinstalled it, uh, you know, it kicked in. So that's one possibility. Um, another possibility is that the version of Android that you have on your phone got updated. And the thing is, uh, more recent versions of Android have disabled the move to SD card function um, completely. So, and the reason for this is basically like apps running on the SD card, even in old Android versions, are like heavily deprioritized. Um, you know, if you have an app that's in, on, on internal memory versus an app on the SD card and they're running at the same time, the internal memory gets, you know, all of the attention from the operating system and the SD card app is, you know, pushed to the back of the line. Um, so basically, I think somebody at Google Central just said, you know what, since we're doing that, let's just, you know, let's turn that off. Um, to be fair to them, with the exception of games, most apps are pretty small. And it's really, you know, it's the data that takes up a lot of space. So most music pictures and video will be starting your SD card. So I, I don't know how big the Facebook app is. I can't imagine it's enormous, though. Mm. Um, is it taking, like, up a ton of space? Uh, I think it was, like, 25 or 30 megs. Of... Wow. 30 megs? Yeah, really? I could believe that. Yeah. That's pretty big. Um, yeah, it's it's medium-sized. Oh. I I have much bigger games on my... Well, yeah, games, of course. Right. Um, so there are a couple workarounds. Uh for this SD card prohibition, um, if you're really strapped for space. Uh, you got basically two options. You can root the phone, or you can download an app that will do this for you. Um, rooting the phone, rooting the operating system will give you control over it. And you, I, I, I don't remember the details, but I believe once you've got it rooted, there are ways to uh, move any app you like to the SD card. Um, alternatively, if you go to the App Store, there are a few apps listed that will move to the SD card, but I have to emphasize that you got that you're using these at your own risk. Um, <laughs> I, there are reports of people, you know, their apps disappearing or whatever after they do this. So, um, unfortunately, the reality of the situation is Google and apparently Facebook don't really want you to move things to the SD card anymore, and uh, they've kind of made it difficult to do that in a correct or official manner. So, if you really need to do it. Um, you're going to have to uh, go to some workarounds and that kind of thing. Mm. Um, so what you're saying is I should go to Facebook, the website. <laughs> yeah, that's one option. There is always that. Another yeah. option would be to upgrade your phone. Yeah. Yeah, i got to get the wife to sign off on that. Uh-huh. Uh, Aren't you, yeah, man, you should be due for like a free under contract type thing. Uh, there's no contract. So. Uh, oh, yeah. There's your problem. Okay. okay. Well, um, that's that's the direction I'd go. So hopefully that helped a little bit. And uh, thanks for reminding us that you're back there, Robert. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we appreciate we appreciate the fact that you make us look good oh, every week. I try. Yeah. There's always so much with I the can resources do. you have, with the resources he has, and the subjects you have. There's always that. Too. <laughs> that's true. All right. Cool. Well, I am completely zoned out and didn't hear anything you said, so I hope it was good. I said me 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 Android me 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 Android Google Android me me me. That's pretty much what I heard. Um, oh, I did have uh, another comment. If I can go back a question, I forgot to mention this. Oh, okay. Um, one of the people on the Facebook thread for Kristen's question mm-hmm. uh, mentioned Cozy, uh, which is actually a pretty decent calendar app. Okay. Um, I don't believe it does anything with tasks, so that wouldn't really help. Um, uh, also, uh, Jorty, which I don't think Jorty is actually available on iOS. I know it's available on Android. Hmm. Um but if you're still listening, uh, Kristen, um, Cozy is a really good calendar app, especially if you're working with other people like in your family uh, and you're trying to do a family calendar. It's really good. Is it but a it Cozy w- I don't think calendar? it'll help you. Yeah, Cozy Calendar. C-O-Z-I. Uh, it is pretty good. Um, but I don't think it'll help with the situation that you're dealing with. Because hmm. um, like I said, I think a task app is what you're really looking for. 
Do we have any other questions? We are fresh out, but you know, if listeners have questions or listeners have questions, we're going to have to come up with better. <laughs> I'm already tired of <laughs> Listener, that. Listeners doesn't with work. Nerd. Watchers, listeners, uh, viewers. Be sure to give us a call at 1-888-972-9868 or send us an email at questions at dmobile.com or, you know, hit us up on Twitter or the so, Facebook. So should we just wrap up then? Uh, I think we had one last thing to do. Oh, that's right. It's time to announce the winner of the Amazon gift card contest. Woohoo! All right. So let's see here. Let me pull that up. We had 27 uh, entries. We actually had some folks who, who answered the survey and said, you know what? Nah, I'm good. I don't need 20 bucks. Those are nice people. Wow. So if I can find it, where did it go? I had it up and then it disappeared. We are going to go to random.org <laughs> to pick a random number. Let's pull that up. Random.org. Random.org is a really great site that we have used before uh, that will give you a true random number service. Um, mm -hmm. It's probably an algorithm, but it's random enough. So we're going to do 1 to 27. We're going to hit the button here and generate. Uh, okay, so it's number 24. 24. The 24th. 24. If you have 24, please come forward. Oh, wait. They don't, they don't have they numbers. They don't. I'm trying to pull it up here. Uh, it's slowly... Coming up. Let's see who number 24 is. The tension is building. It's I know, killing me. It's crazy. Number 24. You are. 24. Uh, there we go. Okay, found him. Stop. Stop moving. Stop it. <laughs> you are worse it's, than like the it's, presenter. It's at, utter uh, chaos. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. Here we go. It is. Eugene, I won't say their last name. Uh, Eugene, but Eugene, if you're listening, uh, contact us, and we will get you your twenty dollars Amazon gift card. Thank you so much to everybody. Yes, who answered the questions. It gave us a lot of insight. Uh, you basically, a lot of you were kind of rude. Uh, I'll, I'll just be honest. You were rude. I didn't like it. You know, you didn't have to call my mother names. I didn't appreciate that. Wow. <laughs> no, most everybody was really actually very. Uh, uh, complimentary and thank you all for that um and and it, for the folks who kind of were slamming us a little bit I, we really appreciate it you uh help us you know figure out what we're doing wrong so um and what we can make better so mm -hmm. if you do ever have a comment or a question you know if you want to say hey stop doing that or hey do more of this or you know why don't you ever do that whatever those are you can always always uh just shoot us an email or give us a call you don't just have to call us if you have questions you can call us to yell at us too we'll open the lines up for that it's okay you know if you got feedback always give it to us 1-888-972-9868 or emails at questions at com. all right that is that's it that's, that's all it. the time we have for that's today all we got. yep thanks for your questions keep them coming like tom said and like i said give us a call on our toll-free number 1-888-972-9868 or you can send us an email at questions at com and subscribe to the show search for us on deemable at deemable tech on itunes youtube facebook and the twitters you know, follow us and subscribe there. Our producer is Sean Birch. Thanks to Robert Snyder again for video production assistance. I'm Ray Hollister. I'm Tom Braun. And this is Deemable Tech. Thanks for listening and have a great week. <laughs>